I'm going to share with you today five tips that somebody could tell you to do to your bees that actually might kill your whole entire colony. Hi, I'm David Burns, and if this is your first time to check in on my YouTube channel, hey guys, thanks a lot for joining me. And if you're a loyal subscriber and you're back again for another video, thanks again. This is great to have you back. Hey, today, let's jump right into five bad tips Bad advice that you can get about overwintering your colonies. Wrong tip number one, some people might suggest that you use a heating lamp inside or around your hive. Now this is not a good idea to use a heat lamp or some heating pads because it can actually give a wrong signal to the clustered bees inside. Bees cluster, stay real close to each other to stay warm. And when you provide excessive heat from the outside, that is not really the kind of weather that's going on, they might interpret it that it's summertime and they may fly out. They'll fly out into very cold weather and they can actually not make it back to the hive. They're kind of misled, thinking it's warm by your heat lamp, but it's really not. And their little wing muscles just freeze up and they crash to the ground. Not a good idea to use any kind of heating lamps or heating pads around your colony. Not to mention that electrical wiring and all could be a little bit dangerous as well. Wrong tip number two, wrong advice that you may get is somebody may tell you don't worry about snow, don't worry about ice, and don't worry about winter critters. Some people say, you know, button up your hive for winter, you know, wrap it up or whatever you need to do, and then go to Florida, enjoy your life down there, and you don't have to worry about your hive at all during the winter time. That's not entirely true. That can be bad advice as well. Here's why. If you get a snow or an ice storm, especially ice storm, it can actually suffocate your hive. You can actually have so much snow and so much ice that the bees can't get any airflow at all and they still do need air. Now, bees don't have lungs like we have. They don't breathe like we do, but they do still have spiracles. They do still have to have air to oxygenate their cells. They need air. So sometimes in the winter time, you have to go out there after a big snow and clear a way uh, for them to have access to air. Now, I remember many times before I do it the way I do now, many times I would go out to all my colonies after a big snow and I would rake away the snow from the entrance so the bees could have some airflow there. Now, I do it an entirely different way now. And at the end of this video, I'll show you how I do it now. I don't have to worry about snows anymore. But in the old days, snow and ice really did bother me because it can cut off all airflow and actually suffocate your colony and kill it. Now let's talk about winter critters. Do we need to be concerned about winter critters? Well, those of you that are in bear country, you're already used to fighting off bears, keeping bears away from your colony, using usually some battery powered electric fences. These are the best ways to keep bears out of your beehives. But there's other critters all across the U.S. that will still play havoc with your bees in the wintertime. Mainly, you'll see coons go out to a hive, and as small of a critter that they are, you don't realize that they can still work the top cover off of a hive. Now, they're going for the sweet honey. They're trying to get the top off. They'll steal your you know, feeders that you set out there. Those coons will just walk off with feeder jars full of sugar water. So they're still out there wanting some food in the wintertime as well. Another critter this bad in the wintertime are mice. Mice will actually try to get in that hive in the wintertime. They want a warm place. And once they get in there, they notice honey and bees they can eat. And they can actually kill your colonies as well. You need to put some sort of mouse guard on your hive in the fall and you can really keep those mice out. Now maybe you notice in the thumbnail of this video that I had an arrow drawn to a little hole in the handle of one of the boxes. That's another misconception as well. Some people say that you don't need to mend up your hive, like you can leave gaping holes open like that. Maybe you use those holes in the, in the summer for bees to gain quicker access to your honey supers. I highly recommend that you seal those off. Too much winter wind can, and rain can really get in there. Plus, if it warms up and starts to turn off kind of nice during the summer, you can have other colonies to use that entrance hole to rob out that honey super. So I recommend that you go through your colony, take a good look around right now that it's winter time, and take some Gorilla Tape and tape up any holes like that or corners that have broken off 
Even if you have to use a staple gun, sometimes tape can get weather worn and it might start to peel off, but you can always use a stapler and staple that Gorilla Tape onto your box so it holds even though the glue may give away. I don't think that glue is gonna give away with Gorilla Tape. Before I get into the next tip, I wanna share with you that our classes are gonna be 50% off on Black Friday. That includes how to get your bees through the winter where I talk in more detail about these things that I'm sharing with you now. What about placing your hive in a building? That's usually a wrong tip. Wrong tip number three, just pick up your colony and take it inside the shed, the barn, the basement. Now moving your colony indoors can be a big problem unless you're really used to doing that. Some big beekeepers, commercial beekeepers up north, they have dedicated buildings that are designed to move colonies indoors and they know exactly how to do that. If you're not experienced with it and you're just gonna move them inside your barn or something like that, here's some problems I wanna warn you about. Sometimes the bees will fly out. When it warms up, you know, 45, 50 degrees, they'll fly out. And if they're in a building, they'll fly to the light or a window. If they can't get, get access to outdoors, they actually get stuck or stranded at a light or a window. And they stay there kind of beating their head up against the wall till they all die. It's very, very risky trying to move those boxes or those colonies inside of a building unless you know exactly what you're doing. That building has to be temperature controlled and at the lighting there can be zero light or it all has to be red light only. If you move your bees into a building, just beware. You have to know what you're doing. Just bringing them into a barn or a basement or something like that, very, very risky. Wrong tip number four is that you should open up your hive and manipulate those frames in the winter time. Now, before I tell you why this is wrong, let me encourage you to please subscribe. We're trying to get 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year, and we've only got a few weeks to do it. So please subscribe, and by all means, click on the like button. That helps my video a lot, give me a thumbs up. Now, why is it bad to manipulate frames in the winter time? First of all, when you open up a hive, you know, bees are clustered. It's not gonna hurt them to take the top off, take a quick peek, because they're keeping warm by being close to each other. But what does hurt is if you pull a frame of brood up, that brood is gonna be exposed to too cold of a temperature and can kill the developing pupae that, that's in that colony. Also, a lot of times, the wrong advice is you should start manipulating your hives in the dead of winter. And that means maybe you wanna move some frames of honey closer to the cluster. Why I think that's bad advice is because what if the queen is moving around just at the wrong time or at the wrong place when you're moving frames and you kill the queen because she was on a frame that you moved over and when you put your frames together, you smashed her. Hey, let's admit it. Oh my gosh, it's so easy to kill a queen, right? And so when you're manipulating hives in the wintertime, if you were to kill your queen, there's nowhere to, no way to replace her. You can't buy a queen. It's too cold really to introduce a queen or have a queen shipped to you. So I don't recommend manipulating frames. I believe all your frames should be manipulated long before it turns cold. That is, put the honey frames on, uh, around the cluster, put the honey frames above the cluster, so they go up into that honey as they cluster and move through winter. But don't wait until winter to go out there and try to manipulate frames. Again, I think it's perfectly fine to take the top off if you wanna put a top winter feed on or something like that. Long as you don't manipulate frames, you're pretty much safe and not killing your queen. Now, wrong tip number five, wrong advice number five, I often hear people say, never feed your bees in the winter time. Now, you might have enough honey on board, your bees may be fine, they may have enough honey to get them through winter, but I like to feed my bees in the winter time, if nothing else, just for insurance. I've gotta put a candy board on top of all my colonies in case they run out of honey during my long winter, they'll have access to actually have food above them. Now let me explain how I feed my bees in the winter time and I explain it in this tip right here in this video. So follow me over there. This is a good video showing you how to feed bees in the winter time. I'll see you over there.